going on, everybody? Welcome to the Tuesday edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm Eric, joined with my buddy Ryan as we break down the five-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, Miami Heat Chalk Day. Hope everybody had fun. Xavier Tillman, he's pretty good. Isaiah Stewart, he's even better. Rin Pack, how's your night going? Yeah, it's a, it was a tough go of things. I had a uh, final presentation that started about four minutes before lock, and I missed out on getting in my final um, DraftKings allocated uh, uh, set of lineups. It just it is what it is. It's just it was a tough balance, and uh, just being a uh, grad student and playing DFS caught up to me. Uh, on one of these nights. Unfortunately, it was just on DraftKings as I managed to get everything else in. I missed out on Isaiah Stewart there. Luckily, had him on FanDuel and everywhere else. A couple things that did go right late, swapping on to more Andre Iguodala, uh, getting off the of Dwayne Dedman and Ariza worked out for me. But uh, it's the overnight, uh, overtime late night hammer and John Moran and Nikola Jokic, where both of them are north of 60 fantasy points now. Uh, John Moran's back, I guess. I guess he heard the slate starter yesterday and Heard me just rip him a new one, but uh, more excited to talk about a Tuesday five game slate with some nice studs. But more, most importantly, we were talking about this pre show. No team is on a second half of a back to back. Thank God. I mean, front half of a back to back is I, I'll have to look at that later. But this is like got to be the first time I can remember in forever that we've been doing this where that isn't the case. Uh, and misery love, uh, misery loves company, my dude. I was on a golf course, played 36 holes. It's the hottest day here in Los Angeles, California, and I got obliterated. I'm 33 years old. I got obliterated by a lot of 30, 40, 50 year old dudes today on a golf course. It was not good and not obliterated in drinking obliterated as in I did not play well. And it's very frustrating. So uh, golf is very, very hard. But anyway, you know what's not hard getting to that bottom button and hitting the like button hitting the subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you know when this and all the other content at awesome is going live we are presented by monkeyknifefight.com uh if you use the promo code awesome a w e s e m o look i can spell you get a hundred dollars a hundred dollars free back into your bank account first deposit bonus uh i know you like that rin pack don't even lie that was that was a great segue and lots of goodness but all the goodness at monkeyknifefight.com. Like, just check out all of the prop-based games. NBA, MLB, NHL, a UFC on weekends. We've got a massive card coming up here on the weekend. Uh, and also, uh, it's really, really fun. So you should check it out. Ren Pack, you ready to go, my dude? Let's ride. All right. Let's go to the top here. Uh, as we said, five gamer. Uh, we have five teams. Or sorry, 10 teams that are on no back-to-backs. That's pretty exciting. Uh, might be on the front half of one. Again, I will check. Kyrie Irving, 9,900. Uh, Brooklyn up against New Orleans. That game looks really fun on paper. De'Aaron Fox, Minnesota against Sacramento. That looks really fun on paper. I mean, right off the bat, those are just two crazy games. And then we have Clippers-Portland on this slate, too. Oh, my gosh. And then Charlotte-New York, that won't be as enjoyable. And Orlando-Atlanta, I'm sure there'll be crazy value there, too, because there has been forever. Let's also throw Trey Young in the bucket. We have Damian Lillard out, so that's going to be a C.J. McCollum spot. But Trey Young up against Orlando, 9K. What do you really kind of make of Trey Young here after a finally, like, another massive... He's had two of his last three where he's had over 60 on DK, but 62.75 up against Indiana, starting to be the Trey Young with a ceiling that we really like to see. Talk to me about the top end of point guard. Well, yeah, Trey Young, $9,500 on FanDuel, and like you said, he's uh, 9K on DraftKings. Where you get that three-point bonus for Trey, uh, got to have a ton of interest over there in DK. Definitely not out of play. That shot volume, 21 shot attempts, 17 shot attempts, 25 shot attempts. Got to the line, uh, 14, 9, 14, 2, 6. Don't like that two in there the last four games, but that 14 and 9 is very nice. Now a matchup versus Orlando. You know, and Orlando slowing down uh, slowing down this team. Last time we played Orlando was on March 3rd. Granted, a much different Orlando team now with a lot of changes in the lineup, uh, but he did put up 54. So uh, he's done well. Uh, I think going to him uh, makes a ton of sense, but spending up to guys like De'Aaron Fox versus Minnesota can't fault you. Fault you. De'Aaron Fox is now matchup proof, I want to say. The only guy who really, I so far from watching a Can lot he of be teams. my dude too? How many dudes are we allowed? I think we need to do like a dude draft where we each get 10 guys. Your first pick will be Michael Porter Jr. My first pick will be Zion Williamson. We'll go back and forth. We'll do a 10-man dude draft one night. Continue on. 
Uh, yeah, maybe to round out the regular season, we will. But uh, I think uh, spending up to guys like De'Aaron Fox and Kyrie Irving, uh, gotta love them both just because Fox and Master versus Minnesota, Kyrie with no Harden, no Durant. I think he uh, can definitely put up a spot against this New Orleans team. I really like spending up for that point guard spot. But man, we can still go to McCollum with no Dame, who's only $8,900 versus the Clippers. I think uh, that's a fine option to consider just because I'm going to expect McCollum to take 26, 27 shot attempts, even more than that in this matchup. But I have a question for you. How do you feel about our cover boy, Terry Rozier, 7,800, 8K on both sides, as he's going to get uh, maybe a week or so more with no LaMelo ball? Uh, Scary Terry is 7,800 over on FanDuel. I'm very excited about Terry Rozier. Also, did I see that you put in a LaMelo ball plus 150 rookie of the year bet today? That is my first ever futures bet. What? Yeah, I, I I don't really uh I don't really dabble in the uh, sports betting market. Oh, so you're just one of the best fantasy players in the world, and you just decide to do that. You're like uh you just keep that on the quiet. Yeah, that's fine. I get that. But anyway, when you when you preach to the people on Twitter, I listen. So uh, Lamelo Ball, you really like that bet right now? I believe so. Yeah, I um uh, I try. I don't. It's. I feel like you can get rewarded in things like that. The more and more I was like looking into and reading it be more and more and trying to just see how I can make certain decisions. And that's the first time I pulled the trigger on a uh, future sports bet. I felt like if you were to come back and play, uh, as soon as I got the notification that he's uh, resuming basketball activities, I think all he needs to do is get into the uh, play-in game uh, for Charlotte, and I think he wins, even though he has missed these games. Anthony Edwards has fallen off quite a bit, with the insertion of D'Angelo Russell, in my opinion. Yeah, not only that, but he's not good. And if you look at any metric, he is so overrated. I'm still so upset at the Minnesota Timberwolves. Why am I a fan? I need to find a new team, I think is what it's going to be. But uh, I do like that bet. I think I think you're getting a nice number on a guy who I think would have been a stone-cold lock. I mean, those odds were crazy before the injury. And mm-hmm. if anybody looks at any metric what LaMelo Ball means to a basketball team. Like, Anthony Edwards was pure on volume, and if they end up giving it to Anthony Edwards, I might I might have a reason to not be a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. Also, Alex Mar- Rodriguez might move them out of Minnesota. Who knows? <laughs> 2023, we'll find out. But uh, anybody else down at the bottom at a point guard that you're kind of looking at that you might have some interest in? Uh, the bottom end of the point guard. For what it's worth, I got word that uh, LaMelo Ball reopened at uh... – Plus 150, so I can't complain about uh Sorry, pl- uh, minus 210. Uh, minus 210. Plus mm-hmm. Yeah. I oh, got so you got some point. nice number on that. Yeah. yeah, so just like DFS reacting to news, I guess there's uh, quite the merit to do that in the sports betting markets. But uh, going into the uh, uh, lower, uh, cheaper options in terms of value, I know Anthony Simons was a topic of conversation last time. Played 30 minutes. Style matchup versus the Clippers. He was not fun against Charlotte. And now Clippers are, I want to say, a better defensive team uh, now. Uh, yes, much better defensive team than Charlotte. <sighs> yes, like it would be a pure tournament option. And another guy in the cheaper range, uh, maybe Derrick Rose against Brooklyn, uh, just because of that matchup. I think those are the options I would consider. Over there in Fando, uh, probably just R.J. Hampton. Still no Terrence Ross. Hampton got up to 22 minutes. Hampton has another uh, – could have a pathway playing more minutes. And uh, Rondo is just someone who I've been just consistently playing because I just think there might be a game where he gets 20 minutes and he can put up 35 fantasy points. I like both of those calls. I really, really like both. R.J. Hampton, I was high on. I did the Sunday Live Before Lock, and we got a bunch of late emerging Orlando value, and it was scary how much I was getting of him and Cole Anthony leading up to that lock. Uh, Cole Anthony, another great play. Obviously, uh, in the mid-fives, he's going to be getting right around 30, 33 minutes uh, for the next however many games going forward. Happy to get to him on any slate, but uh, should obviously garner some ownership. Uh, Ready to move along to shooting guard. Let's do it. Let's do it. Top end over on uh, FanDuel. We're going there. Paul George, $9,000 up against Portland. Uh, Again, we've got some 
nice games on this slate. Uh, Clippers at Portland. I think that should mitigate a little bit of people's blowout risk because apparently everybody really likes to talk about blowout risk lately. We'll talk about that a little bit later here, but CJ McCollum 8100 up against the Clippers on the other side. Not a great price tag, uh, FanDuel, by the way. I know that it doesn't seem like it, and he hasn't necessarily played to it, but DraftKings elevating him up to 8,900 makes you think a little bit. I think CJ McCollum's going to have some crazy ownership. I believe he was 66% owned in the big tournament two days ago. Uh, he's going to be 50% plus on a on a five-game slate for sure. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, 6,300. Not getting enough minutes uh, to really be kind of viable, even at that number of 6,300. Against Sacramento, maybe he could spike an upside, but uh, Devon A. Graham, uh, going to be questionable again here. If he ends up sitting, uh, that boosts Terry Rozier big time. If he ends up playing 6,100 against New York, I might have to take a shot or two there. Talk to me about the top end of shooting guard. Yeah, well, um, the top end of shooting guard, obviously, uh, taking a look over there on drafting side of things, we got McCollum, Kyrie, Paul George, $9,400, someone who could uh, play really well against this Portland team. I I think uh, George will be probably much, much uh, lower owned compared to guys like McCollum and I, uh, Kyrie. But there's a chance that Paul George could strike an upside in tournaments to take your chances there. Uh, so guys who seem a tad too expensive over there are guys like uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich seems a little too expensive at $7,800 now. I think uh, I know he's been very, very good, but for at $7,800, I think we need mid 40s fantasy points. He's shooting very, very efficiently from the field. I don't expect him to continue to shoot 50% from the field, three straight games in a row, and uh, just shy of 50% from three uh, last couple of games. So, been very good. Don't get me wrong. I really love him as a basketball player. But in terms of DFS purposes, a tough for me to go there. Only shooting guard eligible. Eligible. Anthony Edwards now versus Sacramento. I know we just uh, took a dump on him in terms of his basketball <laughs> yeah, we ability. Did. We absolutely did, but also deservedly so. He's so cocky and confident, and I, I, I think he could be a really nice piece still. I'm still holding out hope on it. He ain't it right now. I'm just letting that be known. But now... Uh, t- could have 40 point upside and I'll have interest against um, the Kings tomorrow. Tough for me uh, not to, uh, to pass up on potentially 20 shot attempts at that price tag. Uh, but it doesn't help that D'Angelo Russell's still in the mix. Russell's slowly uh, just hovering around the mid 20s minutes. I don't know uh, what that minutes limit's going to look like tomorrow. But at 6K, Russell, a matchup versus the Kings, if you were to find a way to get to 28 minutes, he could find a way to 40 fantasy points because. He's a good shooter when he gets going from the field, and uh, I think that's another option to go to. You Someone mean who like a... Buddy Heald? Oh, well, I was going to get there. Okay, we'll continue, get there. continue. I'm just, you know, a little preview. Not like people didn't know you were going to recommend Buddy Heald on a five-game slate. They know us this well by now. Yeah, Buddy Heald on this slate uh, definitely will uh, be in some of my lineups for sure. Uh, last time we played Minnesota, put up 38 and three quarters fantasy points. Uh, was very disappointing against Dallas. Only took five shot attempts. I expect him to take mid-teen shot attempts against the uh, Timberwolves tomorrow. Definitely someone we could consider. Someone who was way uh, too productive in his men's play uh, is, was Dwayne Bacon. Uh, found a way to get the mid-30s uh, fantasy points. I know there's no Terrence Frost still. I'd rather take my chances on a guy like Gary Harris and uh, RJ Hampton instead of Dwayne Bacon tomorrow. Nah. So Dwayne guys. Bacon is a 0. .7 fantasy point producer, but when you take all those other guys off the floor, he's the one who gets to like mid-30s minutes. It's just ridiculous. And not only that, takes over a lot of more usage with Terrence Ross off the floor. Uh, I don't completely hate Dwayne Bacon, but what I do expect this slate around is that Dwayne Bacon will be more popular. He was pretty popular last time, too, and I, he got there. Luckily, I was just about with the field, and I was very, okay. like, fancy with that decision. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, I think I'll be going under the field. On a five-game slate, I'm, I'd rather uh, take my chances elsewhere. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Father. My fault. I didn't mean to. Uh, I know I, I liked Dwayne Bacon that slate. I, I, I don't really uh, know, but I, I think you're probably right on being a little off of him there. Do you know the difference between Caleb and Cody Martin? Because I still watch basketball every single day, and they kind of do the exact same thing. Uh, Caleb Martin is the guy that we want to play tomorrow, yes? 
Great question. I just know one's the name's Cody and one one's name's Caleb. Me too. And one shows up in an optimizer one way and the other one doesn't. And it's well, kind of working that way. And uh, I haven't seen enough. I've watched a handful of the Martin brothers. And uh, it's just that I just don't think they're, they're the greatest uh, fantasy players, but sometimes they have been playing great. Uh, Co- uh, Cody Martin has gone thir- 25 point. Uh, just 25 uh, fantasy points both times, 35 and 38 minutes. Tough not to like those minutes at that price tag at 4K. So uh, really uh, unsure what my Martin brother decision will be. Uh, tough to fade those minutes, though. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to get, though. Yeah, 4,100, he's the cheaper one playing massive minutes. Uh, Caleb Martin, I think the better uh, permanent fantasy producer, had the 41.5 that game he started against the Lakers. But anyway, just be on Martin Brother Alert. That's kind of what I was thinking. Just wanted to throw him out into the out into the atmosphere. Uh, that's always a fun discussion. To the top end of power forward we go. We got Zion Williamson, 9,800. Our boy. Again, we might have to fight for him in the Your Boy draft, I think is probably what it comes down to, because I think he's both of ours. Julius Randle, 9,400 up against Charlotte. John Collins, 7,200. Uh, came back into the fray, only played 20 minutes, put up 9.9. Not going to be viable at 7,200 more than likely. Might be difficult. If you were to get to like 24 minutes, you can't still play him there. The one guy who's so frustrating and it's so disgusting to me, this Vernon Carey Jr. thing, where he ends up in the starting lineup. I was planning on playing all of the P.J. Washington on Sunday, and I ended up playing none of it. And I think it was a massive mistake, and I'm willing to call myself out. It's not like P.J. Washington just wasn't magically going to play, but when he wasn't starting, he hadn't played for three games, and he played 34 minutes right out of the gate. 6,500, if you get all of those dudes, I mean, they're kind of just transitioning to giving Vernon Carey some shots and P.J. Washington there playing some backup five. Looked great, 46.6 on FanDuel. Just wished I was on board then because I think he's going to be more popular now. 6,500 on FanDuel. Talk to me about the top end of power forward. Yeah, so uh, I will hop back to the small forward spot on FanDuel. And uh, going to Kawhi Leonard at $9,900 versus the, against this Portland matchup, I think is a uh, great option to consider. Oh, definitely. Uh, I know, I, I think uh, definitely uh, someone we should definitely keep our eye on. Brandon Ingram against Brooklyn, uh, still in play at $8,600 against the Brooklyn matchup. So I think we can definitely uh, take our chances there. And on FanDuel, Buddy Hill deserves a shout out at 6 k uh, just because you had to roster two, and I wasn't going to let you uh, miss out on that. I tried to uh, skip to the position craftily before we did any of that. Kawhi, uh, Kawhi Leonard also, people can see 23 minutes. Don't be fooled by that. They just completely annihilated the Timberwolves. That game was over uh, in the first quarter. It was over. And uh, another guy, uh, spend down, uh, Joe Harris on both sides. Three-point bonus in him could uh, work out favorably, even at $5,900, just because – I expect him to take uh, a bunch of open threes against New Orleans, and he should be able to knock down a bunch of them. And only price at $4,600 on FanDuel. I expect him to be very, very popular. And Carmelo Anthony is still in play. Uh, he played 28 minutes, took 19 shot attempts. I think uh, still a solid, solid option at that $4,200 price tag on FanDuel. I don't have issues going to uh, Melo even against the Clippers matchup. Because I think he's going to find a way to play mid-20s minutes, take uh, potentially 15, 16 shot attempts. I might have jumped the gun. I apologize. I got Caleb and Cody Martin enamored, I guess, is probably the right way to say it. It was like, oh, the position's over. We talked about the two most important pieces, which is not true. Uh, Harrison Barnes, my guy, uh, over at 6,700 over on DraftKings. You can play him at small forward. That's my one shout out there. We'll talk about him more here at Power Forward. Uh, Also, Najee Marshall, now up to 5K. Even if he were starting, I think that price tag makes it tougher. Uh, We have seen some ceiling games from him, but with Zion back, with Brandon Ingram back, with everybody kind of back here now, Lonzo Ball expect to be back, like, going to be tough to get to. But uh, now we go to power forward, Zion Williamson. Yay, right? Of course. How how can we not go to Zion? And position over. Now we go to center. (laughs) No, that was a joke. Keep going. But keep in mind, in the um, last 10 games, he's put up, 27 and 33 fantasy points. Uh, guess against those two teams, which he has done that in. 
It's very low for Zion Williamson in this stretch he's been on. I'm guessing Washington, I know, was one. Uh, what was the other one? So it was Washington two games ago. He put up 29. And I know because, you know, my bank account is now lower. But uh, was it, it had to be another fast-paced team. Sacramento? It was Brooklyn. Brooklyn, okay. Well, there we and go. now back against Brooklyn. I think that was fluky. I've been four of 12 from the field. This guy's been just shooting lights out just because every shot is so near the basket. And I think he's a smash play, 50, 60 fantasy point upside. Uh, love Zion Williamson. And I, I think I, I won't fault you if you want to say to Julius Randle because Julius Randle has been that good. He's been Zion before Zion has been Zion this year. It's and true, uh, which is kind of scary. <laughs> And he's been involved in more uh, facets of the game, like getting up assists. So Randall, uh, now the real runaway favorite for most improved player of the year, out priced at minus 500 as I was taking a look in other futures. Can the Knicks win a playoff series? Can the Knicks play the playoff series? Can they win a playoff series? I don't think they can. If they somehow play Indiana in a 4-5 matchup, uh, maybe. Okay. But that's about it. Because this has been fun to watch them, and they obviously play hard, and you know Tibbs has his system and does his thing, but still don't think they're going to win a playoff series. Sorry, Knicks fans, continue. <laughs> It'd be something if the Knicks and Nets meet in the uh, uh, playoffs, though. That would uh, be so epic. That'd be uh, quite the uh, series. Your lips to God's for... ears, young man. Uh, maybe Adam Silver will find a way to uh, make that work, uh, work out link so uh he knows a few a few things to uh, make that happen but other guys at that power forward spot i uh, we had talked about uh, pj washington earlier 6500 now is he going to get the start he looked great against this Knicks team i'm not sure what Borrego is going to do with the front court uh a rotation tomorrow it's been tough of late uh to see what ends up happening in that situation but another guy who could get more shot attempts and FanDuel scoring really uh, helps him out. I know it was disappointing against Charlotte, but it's uh, Robert Covington priced at $5,600. A very uh, weird contrarian pricing for him. And what's going to be your opinion if uh, the uh, Blazers start Ryan Day Hollis Jefferson tomorrow? $3,400, $3,500 on both sites as uh, the pricing guy on both sites looks like to be on vacation. Um, with Hollis Jefferson at that price tag. Do you I, w- think- I won't play him again. I won't play him. You won't play him? Nope. Uh, I, I was off of him. He was 3K the other day, and I projected him, projected him around 15 minutes. I think Alex and, and I think Osimo's projections had him around like 15, 16 minutes as well. I think that that was pretty sharp. I think he got up to 22, which was kind of surprising. So maybe maybe there's something to be said with that. Uh, obviously did not burn you at 14.75 fantasy points. He's been a better fantasy point per minute uh, producer, but he's been doing that in spots like Brooklyn when they were bad, when there was nobody else in Brooklyn, when he's had some run in some really dead places uh, and he's gotten some extended run. Uh, do you kind of believe him? Like, I don't even think I would have played him if he was free the other night. Uh, and now I guess seeing 22 minutes makes me think a little bit, but uh, what's your interest level there? Um, on a five game slate, we haven't had much value that's really opened up below 4k. Um, so far, RJ um, Hampton, all in tough to be all in on RJ Hampton. I our... disagreed with myself. I know, I, I'm just saying it's uh, see, because we're gonna have to choose uh, from guys like RJ Hampton, uh, Mo Harkless. Um, it's not an ugly, how sub could you 4K. be Mo Harkless? How could you be Mo Harkless? This is a weird show. I apologize. (laughs) You will never get that out of your head, nor will any listener for the rest of their lives. Continue. You might as well just finish off the uh, song at this point. How could you be Mo Harkless? Ooh. We've got to tell tell someone to make a cut of that and then play that on the tip-off show when you're back. Honestly, I just came up with that right now, but it sounds great. Have you ever seen that anywhere? I've never seen it anywhere. I haven't, but maybe... Uh, you Mo have... Harkless. It works perfectly. I just you came up have, with that. You might have to uh, make your own Mo Harkless uh, segment on the tip-off. 
All right. It is, uh, what's the day? I mean, it's 420, right? Isn't that the day we're doing this for? <laughs> this all makes sense. Continue. <laughs> but yeah, that's how that power forwards uh, situation or like sub 4K situation is. Honestly, on both sites, it's tough. Uh, we've been talking about the Martin Twins, like a lot of like plays that we haven't. We've had confident sub 4K uh, value plays with the slate this small. We're now dealt with a different set of cards, and we're going to be forced to making uncomfortable decisions. Well, let's take ourselves over to center, uh, where you shouldn't be making uncomfortable decisions, because at the center position, you have Carl Anthony Towns, who uh, is absolutely Rinpak's boy. He's supposed to be my boy, because I'm a Timberwolves fan, but it's still difficult. Clint Capella, 9,400, sitting below him. So 10-8 for Carl Anthony Towns on FanDuel. Clint Capella, 9,400. Rashawn Holmes out with a hamstring injury. Uh, so that's going to continue to open up you-know-who, Hassan Whiteside. Wendell Carter, 6,400, still sitting at a depressed tag. Over on DraftKings, it becomes Towns. You can play Randall Zion. Capella's 9,100. Wendell Carter, 6,600, a little inflated there. But Enos Canner is really the guy to talk about. 6,100, we're not going to get Nurkic tomorrow. That's kind of the spot to be looking at. 5,500 on FanDuel. Picking between Cantor and Whiteside tomorrow. That should be fun. Talk to me about center on FanDuel and DraftKings. So, yeah, uh, FanDuel tomorrow. Obviously, we have Cantor. There's Capella, 9,400. John Collins is back, uh, playing limited minutes. And that does not help Capella by any means, as we've, we've seen the last couple uh, weeks. He put Capella. up 67.8 alongside of the last time out. Let me just point that out. I don't think that's sustainable. I don't think this. I, I just accidentally hit my mute button. Continue. I don't think 24 rebounds will happen again. I'll take the under on that this time around. But uh, Cantor uh, against the Clippers, he has 30 rebound upside. We've seen it. Uh, that's that's who Cantor is. Also for sustainable. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. This feels like an ESPN first take show. You and me today. It's been so good. Keep going. But Canner, 5,500, uh, even against the Clippers matchup versus Zubach, can't fault you. Wendell Carter Jr. and Mo Bamba, it's been tough there. Uh, Carter Jr. has been more expensive than uh, uh, Mo Bamba, and Mo Bamba has been outperforming Carter Jr. at m- many times when Mo Bamba has been playing even 16, 17 minutes. I, I would love for Mamba to, uh, Bamba to start and play more minutes because he's a br- pretty solid fantasy uh, pretty, uh Contributor. Mo, Mo, Bamba. Mo, Mo. Do you know the actual song Mo Bamba by Sheck West? Oh, yeah. No, I actually do know that one. And I'm not one of the young kids like you. I do know that one. Now, that, that song actually slaps, though. It I is fantastic. It, I'm so. not going to even lie. Uh, but other guys, Zubach, I think, uh, is going to be required to be on the floor more. $5,100, great tournament option. Adam 6K versus Brooklyn seems a tad too expensive. Just going down the FanDuel list as uh, taking a look at things now. But Cat playing Sacramento. Uh, I banged his knee the other day, uh, and they just took him out. I don't know why uh, they played him even up 35. As I saw your tweet, I would have been tilted for sure. Cat should definitely dominate Hassan Whiteside uh, at $5,400. But won't fault you if you either $5,400 savings on FanDuel. You could do a lot. Whiteside. Uh, has put up monster performances in uh, the season past when given minutes. Over there in DraftKings, it can, you can do a lot uh, in the center spot. You can find a way to jam into potentially with enough value. Uh, guys like Zion, Julius Randle also have uh, center eligibility. Canner 6100, definitely a solid option. Cat 10-6 uh, should be uh, one of the uh, – you're probably your top uh, projected scorer, I want to say, in this matchup right now. You can go to guys like Kyrie, but Cat uh, definitely should be uh, yeah. among if his, these. Uh, if his knee's actually good the way that they said, because he left Sunday, and that was the day that I was up in arms where I'm like, what are you doing? You're down 35 against the Clippers. Why do you bring Cat back into that game? It must be a Cat thing where he wants to be playing those kind of minutes, and he's like, look, make me happy. It's my team. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, no, that's all I can come up with. Definitely. And another guy who uh, could play 30 plus minutes uh, against Charlotte and uh, pick up his way without just getting points is Nerlens Noel, $4,500 on FanDuel, where he uh, can pick up blocks at $5,100. I don't mind it. Is a sub, I have 10% option maybe on a slate of this size. Uh, 
that could be an option to go to. But Cat and everyone else, uh, obviously on DraftKings, you've got multi-position eligibility. You can mix and match with some other guys. But it's going to be a uh, Cat slate for sure for me. Uh, tough for me not to have a lot of Cat tomorrow. Agreed. Rinback, you want to close it out for everybody here today? We have Mo Harkless. We have Mo Bamba. We have Mo everything. Well, I hope it's Mo money for everyone who's listening today. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely, hopefully, we're uh, starting things off for you guys. And uh, definitely thanks so much for uh, tuning in yet again on a Tuesday site. So, as you know, it's uh, the home stretch in the NBA regular season. A lot of things can change. Uh, just keep an eye on that situation. I know it's a five game slate. No one on the second half of back to back. There's going to be some sneaky guy who uh, breaks the slate that we don't know. This was a spicy meatball tonight. I liked it. It was delicious. Guys, uh, enjoy your evening. Uh, enjoy your morning if you're listening to us there. Make sure you go over, leave us a five-star review over on the podcast network. Uh, if you do that, you can. if you leave your email address, if you leave your, uh, your username, correct, over at Osmo, if you leave any of the things that we can contact you uh, and you leave a five-star review, we can get you. An Osmo free plus. We do a drawing and, for it. Uh, go and ahead. There's another, and there's another way you can uh, win a month of Osmo plus. Um, uh, yeah, go to Osmo.com slash giveaways. We're giving away five Osmo plus month passes this week. Um, it doesn't take long at all. Maybe 10 seconds once you're on the page. And you will be uh, entered automatically uh, once you complete those things that they, uh, the form says. So do not miss out on that, that giveaway. Osmo.com slash giveaways amazing yeah and again it takes 10 seconds definitely do that if you want to be a part of the crew if you're not already he's ryan i'm eric we'll see you back here for wednesday slate how could you be mo heartless